Good morning, guys. Looks like we got some bounce uh, on Friday. Some of these stocks. When is my next blog post? Oh man. When I'm not so lazy. <laughs> when I'm not playing Hearts of Iron 4. That's when my next blog post is going to be. I have a lot of things I could blog about, but man. It's just not very high on my priority list. No, I didn't buy any on the bounce on Friday. I'm in no hurry to try to find a bottom in the markets. Maybe this is it, maybe this isn't it. I'm gonna wait for solid setups that I'm comfortable with. Yeah, I mean, some of the bounce setups are really, really good, like TTD undercutting the 200 day, and it's just not really, it's not a setup I'm super comfortable with. So I just passed. So I just passed on those things. To receive dividends, do you need to be a shareholder by close of ex-state? I have no idea. I, I, I don't really care about dividends at all. If I'm in a stock and I get a dividend, that's great. If I don't, couldn't care less. I have no idea. How did when you have to own to get the dividend. Excited about Tupperware? <laughs> yeah, it is setting up in a big, big flag. It is. High tide flag on the weekly-ish. XRT is uh, setting up because GME is going higher. It's a play and G oh, GME is apparently, you know, affecting this thing a lot. But yeah, it is a fairly good looking setup. M, yeah, it is. I may buy some stuff today. I'm thinking maybe a couple of triple ETFs. Um, maybe. 
not sure about which ones. Maybe TQQ. Um, not sure. Not sure. Friendly advice on triple ETFs. The same way you use technical analysis on everything else. Ranges. Higher lows, lower highs, relative strength, relative weakness. Nothing special about triple ETFs other than the fact that they are the percentage moves are bigger. Which means, generally smaller position sizes. What am I long? I'm long GME. I'm, I'm long like a quarter size of GME. Or third size. Yay. But yeah, I may, I may, I may increase my long exposure. I'm going to keep my shorts. Uh, until they actually confirm and uh, start taking out the 10 day moving averages right now they're everything I'm short you know yeah can it bounce a few days but but then it's gonna hit all these uh, declining moving averages and that's when I'm gonna see how this bounce um, if it has any staying power if it starts failing that's gonna give me uh, confidence in the next direction of the market Like if we bounce for a few days and then everything starts fizzling out, well, I'm gonna increase my short exposure. But if it, if the bounce sticks, we bounce for a few days and it sticks, and we start seeing setups, like breakout setups, I'm gonna start buying with both hands. TNA in better shape, uh, yes, but I'm looking at TQQ because um, I don't know doesn't really matter it doesn't matter it, this is more of a bounce setup than TNA why wasn't I stopped out on GMBL uh, that's a good question yeah it closed below the 20 day it had this big wick I'm just using the lows of Friday as my final stop it's a tiny position it's it's like I think it's less than half of my total account uh half a percent i mean uh we'll see if it can reclaim the 20 or, or this range the 16 dollar area and keep building higher lows i'll keep it and if it doesn't look like it's you know gonna bounce from here i'll just get rid of it it's just a tiny position i i couldn't care less of it right now uh, th the thing is when i bought it the whole idea was to use a wide stop uh We'll see. My uh, chat with traders interview, was it good? Yeah, it was okay. I gave myself four out of five. Core, this is buyout related stuff. Oh, never mind. It was someone on Twitter, not in here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Shippers, uh, SPLK, yeah. What are the other ones in the shipper sector? Too bad Rice doesn't exist anymore. Sino, oh, that one. Oh, this doesn't look great. This, what's the ADR on this? Oh, it's 3.2, it's not as low as I thought, but no, it's not really type of stock I like to trade. Good luck, everyone. And also, if you wrote to me on social media and I haven't responded, it's because there's like 200 people writing to me every day.
Oh, David. RDNT. Does it have explosive earnings though? That's the question. So EPS minus 43% and revenue growth plus 2%. This is not really something I would call a big edge. When you buy EPs, you want the outliers, you want the mind blowing ones. GME, oh. Now, why did it have to be weak in after hours the day after I bought it? That's the question. Yeah, I sold half of it after hours because it was going down. And now look at it. Bounce is not really very convincing right now. But we'll see. It's still early. But I'm still, I'm still, I'm not really looking to buy any any uptick in any stock. I, I want solid setups. Solid, solid setups. Expo, well, Expev is not a surprise to the markets. Expev is still at no split levels. Do 
want something that we, that's a big surprise. Vinebago. Uh, mm, I don't know. I, it's not really. Uh, it's it's a, a really choppy one. It's all over the place. No, I would never trade this thing. You want clean and linear stuff, not something choppy like Vinebago. And especially, and again, this market too. It's you know. I would definitely not buy anything that's not clear five star in a market like this. Home builders, Len, DHI, yeah, no, I wouldn't say, I don't see any, they're, they're trendless, like they've been going side for six months and they're not really, I don't know, I don't see any good setups in this. And also, be careful not chasing any random stocks going higher, like it's, you want the really good setups. Let's see, now things are turning higher. Or some of them. Um. How would we trade Rhodium best? It's up 40 times in 4 years with only one correction. I 
no idea. Usually it's best to buy things when they're up, you know, before they go up 40 times in price. How do you trade it from here? No idea. Man, it's impossible to trade with a big account. I can't get filled on anything. Oh, God. Have I ever thought about doing a small account challenge on the side? No. <laughs> I mean, why would I do that? I don't. It makes no sense. I. I <laughs> no, I have not. Never understood the concept. Why would someone with a larger account start doing a small account challenge? Never got it. I. I just. It doesn't make any sense. I'm challenged already with having a big account. I don't need another challenge. <laughs> yeah, the fake gurus. They pretend to have big accounts, but yet they only still uh, trade with small accounts. And they pretend to have the uh, small account challenge. That's all they have to sell more subscriptions, I guess. I don't know. Well, I did a small account challenge last year with my Interactive Brokers account. I took it from, was it 200k to 3 million last year? That was a pretty good one. There are some semi-decent setups in stuff like Veil, and there was another one I just looked at. I don't remember the ticker. I set an alert on it. Some of these quite commodity-related South America type of stocks. Uh, I don't know. South American commodity names.
X. Uh, yeah, no, it's a very choppy one. It's all over the place. I don't see it. I don't see it. it needs to tighten up. PLL being a massive best today. TVC, yeah, yeah, it looks okay. It looks okay. Yeah, AR, aren't these um, natural gas names? AR, RC, and what's the third one? I can't remember it right now. I can't recall it. AR, well, there's only one problem with it. It's not really breaking out still inside of this range fossil um it actually looks pretty decent maybe three and a half stars four AMTI? No, I don't think it's a great setup. Looks better on the 60 than on the daily. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess it's okay. I guess it's okay. Super commodity cycle? The CP is a good uh, good setup on the short side, if one was early. It's been in a multi-month trend and now it started speeding up and today is day 4 of this move straight up, and gapped up and failed. Opening range, or you know, loss of VVAP slash opening range lows would have been the entry. It's a pretty decent short setup.
Yeah, I'm looking at eyes. Ooh, wow. Why didn't I buy it opening range eyes on Friday? <laughs> oh, God, what a mover. Are there any uh, shorts available on it? Maybe I should reserve some shares. Oh, pretty expensive. No, no, no. Or actually, not that expensive. No, no, never mind. When someone goes to something goes up thousand percent in two sessions, there could be there could be something here on the short side, but possibly. Gotta wait for the weakness though. Can't just short it into strength. Gotta wait for the weakness. Alright. I located two hundred thousand shares. It's gonna be too expensive to locate more. It was cheaper, yeah. So this thing is, yeah, it's a 10 bagger now. EXPI. Oh, Epics, sorry. <laughs> Epics, yeah. Yeah, it held the correction. Yeah, it's a pretty decent setup. Don't tell me I missed eyes. Oh, come on. I'm so slow, man. I, I I'm not I'm not fit to trade these types of setups anymore. I'm not fit to do it. Yeah, I need to go switch to FPS games. Not even Noko can speed me up anymore. <laughs> yeah, the bounce so far is not really intense. But if we can build, keep building higher lows, uh, it can become intense, or er, more intense. But right now, oh come on, I got filled on like 62,000 shares on the bounce. Oh. I mean, this thing has to go to zero for me to make any worthwhile money on it, come on. <laughs> Vodka? Yeah, I'll fall asleep then.
Yeah, but the thing is, I, I was on the offers, so this time it wasn't me causing the halt. I was sitting on the offers. What the hell is this thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got some eyes. I got filled on a few shares, sixty two, sixty three thousand. Why wouldn't I buy a broker dealer? Oh, I, I don't know anything about that stuff. Can you, can you, what? You can short without a borrow? As a market maker? Oh, as a market maker. Well, I don't want to be a market maker. I, I don't know how that thing works. It's, that's, that's so far over my head. I'm not really interested in shorting stuff anyways. Now, if I see a five-star opportunity, I take it. But the, at this point, the easy money for me, the account size I have, it, it's on the long side. I'll watch some YouTube meanwhile. TSX short here. I, I don't see a setup here. It's just inside of a range. I don't see an edge on GSX at all. Oh, it's unhalted. I was watching YouTube. 
Good thing it wasn't it didn't go to twenty while I was watching YouTube. PBI. Uh, it looks like some, exactly like another stock someone mentioned before. Um, it looks pretty good. It actually looks really good. I like it. It, it does look good. I was watching a Hearts of Iron 4 video. Just like I did on Friday. out of the gate because I didn't see much to do and I see I just don't see much to do I covered my ICLN short it's it's made a big move down um, so I covered that one I went long some plug and tan that's all I've done today um, the tan looks like it's failing and plug I did like the plug, held the 100 day today. It held it on Thursday, undercut it on Friday on the big weekday, and now it held it again. And uh, that's, that's a sign, that's a good sign. Uh, that's why I bought this one. And it's liquid. There's a lot of things that can't bounce at all. Yeah, these are like mean aversion type of trades. Tan touched the rising uh, 150, bounced, and today it built another higher low on the 60 minute and on the daily, but we'll see if that holds. Tilray. Mm, yeah, Tilray could be a. Uh... Actually, if Tilray closes like this, if Tilray is tight like this the rest of the day, it could be a setup for tomorrow. Eyes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to maybe add to it later. Um, not now. But sure, maybe later. Hmm. Keep an eye on it. I'm gonna keep an eye on eyes. Oh, I got filled on more. Okay. I'll add more. I only have a little bit located. I would have wanted to locate like a million shares, but that would have cost me like 160,000 or something. I'm not really in the mood to do. It does, it's not that thick. It trades a lot of volume, but it's not that thick. All right, back to YouTube.
with 60k shares. I don't have 60k shares, I have 100k. His stop loss is 100%. No, it's not. It's highs of the day. What the hell are you talking about? Hmm, Tupperware. Hmm, could be a potential pocket pivot setup. Too thin for me to trade, but it's not bad. It's actually one of the better setups out there in among the momentum stocks. It's held up really well, but man, it's so thin. I added a little bit uh, more to, or you know, I doubled my size on. This uh, eyes also, so I have 200,000 shares now. Still uh, not really a big position. It needs to go, it would need to go down like 50% from here to me, for me to make any. David, now you want to be a moderator? I've asked you before. Okay, I'll make you a moderator. Okay, David, you are now a moderator. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh. Oh, I wonder what David is gonna do. <laughs> it was nice knowing you. RKT, HDF, RKT, I don't see a breakout here, it's no, definitely not a flag here. Exop, yeah, the oil names are, damn, I was hoping for a bit more strength to get nice parabolic shorts in these things, or like extended shorts, but. Nope, nope, nope. CPE, what's the... Oh, yeah. Five-star setup. This is what five-star setups do. And this thing could go to, you know, there's no support until the rising 10 day. This thing could just get started. Bank stocks are really strong. Oh. 
Oh, that's why David wanted to be a moderator. He didn't want to be in slow mode. <laughs> Man. Oh, that's funny. What's the setup on ice? It doesn't seem to be a high tide flag. Well, if you had followed the instructions on the screen, you would know what the setup it is. It's a parabolic short setup. There's definitely no high tide flag in ice. It's a short setup, parabolic short. Uh, BTC USD. Yeah, Bitcoin is flagging nicely. If you can tighten up a little bit more, that would be really nice. I'm not going to cover a single share of ice until it goes uh, back to, I don't know. Takes out the lows of the day. I don't really have a meaningful position in it, so I need a big move. How do I like the base on Palantir? Uh, it is actually not bad. It undercut the 100 day reclaim, now building higher lows. It's actually not bad. Um, it's it's a little bit of a yeah I mean it's not bad it's not bad I'm, I'm gonna watch it for later this week not for today but maybe later this week did you cause this halt when you got full size no I haven't been shorting um, eyes into weakness or actually I did uh, twice but no I didn't do enough size to hold this thing so, uh, ice is very liquid like I, I can't hold ice Cost was illiquid. The ice is, or actually, cost wasn't that illiquid, but it traded very thin. Ice is, it's much more liquid. V and MA ADR of 2.4 respective uh, and two 2.8 respective. Yeah, these are too slow. If you trade stuff like this, you will never make any meaningful money from the stock market. You need to get the ADR or some kind of volatility indicator to your scans. You should never ever get stuff stuff like MA and V uh, in your in your scans unless you're an investor. Great investing stocks, horrible trading stocks. Did I have any trouble covering volume costs when volume? No. Yeah, Tilray too. Uh, for tomorrow, maybe not not here. Not here. All right, back to YouTube.
Oh, for the fifth time. It's a Hearts of Iron 4 video. Here, here, here is proof. No brandy love. <laughs> proof. This is the video I'm watching. Yeah, but RDNT is just a slow random stock. Like, I mean, look at this thing. This never makes any big moves. It's it's too random and choppy. And, you know, it's, it's just because the stock is going up. You know, it's just one day. You know, stick to the explosive ones. That's where your money is going to come from. If you keep trading these, you, you won't make much money from... Like, I'm not saying this won't work. Like, the earnings were mediocre. Like, what, what's the reason for it to go up? You know, you, you want the stuff that, that's really a big surprise to the market. This is just a, you know, random, random update. You know, it, it, w one of the biggest keys to successful trading is cutting the randomness out. There's always some random moves all the time. You really want the outlier type of trades. That's when you're going to be a superstar trader. Trust me on that one. Like RDNT, you know, the growth number, like, what's the reason for something to, to make a big move? I'm not saying RDNT can't make a big move, but it's just a very random, you know, there's, it's just not a superstar. You want the superstars. Hmm. <sighs> Why I bought TQQ now? Because it held the dip. Held the dip. It couldn't go lower, which means there's a good chance it's gonna go higher. That's why I bought TQQ. But again, I'm not playing around with you know big size. It's not even 10% of my account. So so far I've covered ICLN. I bought 10. I bought plug and I bought TQQ. That's what I've done today. And I shorted eyes. Nugget. Uh, it looks like shit. What's gold doing? Gold looks like shit. No thanks. What's silver doing? Oh, it looked... Oh, actually, silver is still holding these higher lows. It's not going away. Gold is going away, but silver is not. Interesting. BBBY, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's true. Hey, uh, K72 guy. Yeah, it's true. It's not the earnings. Well, actually, it is the earnings that matter. You, you always want to find the earnings outliers. That's where the money is. But if it's like a really good report, like, you know, big growth, big surprise, what that quote means, you, you should still stick to the superstar earnings, the superstar stocks, but only if they go higher. Like, if it's a really good report, big earnings, big uh, sales, big surprise, but it's going down, it's not going to help you. That doesn't mean you should buy anything random that's, you know, hap you know that's up on earnings. In my opinion. Now, obviously, there's many ways you can trade these things, but... But I haven't found uh, big, uh, big, uh, big uh, success trading random stocks. I've traded so many random stocks over the years, and it's just been a big fr frustration. But looking at it now, it actually had pretty good EPS beat. I didn't check the earnings before. 
But still, it's not, it's not really my type of stock. It's really not my type of stock. Go go? No, I don't see a good setup here. Okay, back to YouTube. All right, I'm gonna do do one more scan. What's Ice doing? Ice is still weak. Nice. Mm -hmm. If we close strong, I may cover some more shorts. And if this Mara, if it closes like this, I'll definitely cover it. Uh, it's very close to the 10 day. Riot is much weaker. Okay. Let's do the last scan. This lift has been a superstar. This thing hasn't really cared about them any market sell off. But this is, it's just one stock out of, you know, thousands. And then there are some, you know, stuff like this car. But they all broke out m many weeks ago. So that's gonna help us zone. Yeah, I, I, th I still, you know, like I don't see any high conviction things. I dip my toe in the, on the on the long side. I still have most of my shorts. Actually, I don't have most of my shorts. I covered I've covered at least a third on everything I was short. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's all about the waiting. Unless you're a day trader. As a day trader, there is things to do every day. As a swing trader, not necessarily. Unless you're like a really short term swing trader. XLF, what's the question? Is XLF breaking out of a long? Uh, I couldn't upload the stream on Friday. No, XLF is, uh, is straight up for several months. It's not breaking out of a long range. It's, it's absolutely not. It's been going for a long time. It had a good setup here though. It bounced off to 50. Uh, let's see. 
Well, technically, if you uh, open and close a trade on, during the same day, it's technically a day trade. GNMK. Uh, yeah, maybe for tomorrow. It's actually not bad. I, I was not able to upload Friday's stream. There was some error where it, it didn't want to let me upload. Super weird. Maybe... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try again. I'll try again. All right, guys. Thanks for joining and I'll see you tomorrow. Good luck.